right. I'm so happy to greet all of you and say that you are heartily welcome to part three of the Practical Discipleship Training School, where we are going to talk about baptism in water, a part of salvation, of the first steps together with Jesus Christ. When you have preached the gospel and people have responded to the gospel, they have asked for forgiveness of their sins and they have received the new birth through the Holy Spirit. One of these first steps that we love to take people to is baptism in water. We don't believe that little children should be baptized. We believe that people of faith should be baptized on their own decision. We respect people far too much to carry infants to baptism. It should be an adult decision something that you do deliberately with your own will power you should say I want to follow Jesus in baptism all right as I'm introducing this to you and we are going to study the book of Acts again uh, I'd like to say that the direct translation of the Greek word you know the New Testament was written in Greek except Mark's gospel but otherwise in Greek and uh, it the, the direct translation of the Greek word for baptism, baptisma or baptismo, uh, means to dip something in paint. They, you know, they, they, they were coloring cloths uh, or, or clothes and they were dipping them in uh, to the dye, to the dye, to the paint. And uh, it can also mean to, to, to drown something, to hold something down under the water until it's dead. It can also mean to sink a ship. Uh, to get something big down. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just trying here. But, but that is what it means. So when, when, when we're asked to baptize, we're asked to, to immerse something into the water. Not just sprinkle a little water on their heads. And, and Jesus commanded his disciples to make disciples. So he commanded his disciples, this is how you make disciples, by baptizing them in water. Matthew's gospel, chapter 28, is probably... Uh, the, the, the absolutely most well-known great commission text in, in Matthew's gospel chapter 28. And, and, and we read there when Jesus talks about his authority. Uh, he says, go ye out, he says. And in verse, I'm reading from Matthew's gospel chapter 28 and verse 19. Therefore go and make disciples uh, of all ethnoses, of all nations. How? Well, by baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And verse 20 tells us, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. I know there's a lot of different teachings on baptism. And, and, and people go through long schools before they can be baptized. And, and, and we've been told many times that you cannot be baptized as a smoker. You cannot be baptized as a drinker. You cannot be baptized uh, with a very short skirt on. And you cannot be baptized uh, and so on. I'm just making fun here. Well, they have asked me, do you baptize smokers? Yes, I say. And I baptize liars. And I baptize... <laughs> <laughs> hypocrites yes when you come to Jesus for salvation baptism is part of salvation it's very clear here that Jesus asked them make disciples by baptizing them and then teach them so you don't need to come in with all the teaching beforehand they don't need to qualify for baptism baptism is part of our the preaching salvation it is part of the first steps so you need to be baptized and then we're going to teach you. So when you come to Christ, and you need to be baptized first. First. And when you read the book of Acts, really you can see that the one that waited the longest to be baptized was Apostle Paul. And he was blind. And he waited for three days. And that was a long time. And as soon as he got his, his eyesight back, when Ananias prayed for him in Damascus, he was baptized. So, follow me. Jesus commanded his disciples to make disciples by baptizing them. And, and, and it was part of their first steps. Mark's gospel, chapter 16, which is one of those uh, other or parallel uh, Great Commission texts. There Jesus says, Who, whoever believes and is baptized, he, he will be saved. But whoever does not believe, he will be condemned. So it's, it seems that it's together, faith and baptism. And in John's gospel, chapter 3, in verse 5, when Jesus talks to, to the, uh, you know, to the scholar, 
uh, you know, to one of us that was part of this, this high council, a very wise Jewish man called Nicodemus that came to him in the night and asked him uh, how he should approach the kingdom of God. Well, then Jesus says to him, you need to be born again. And then he says in, in John's gospel, chapter 3 and verse 5, that you need to be born of water and spirit. So when you receive Jesus, you receive the Holy Spirit by a new birth. And immediately you're being baptized. So why are you being baptized? Well, baptism is about dying. It is a funeral. It is closing an old chapter, beginning a new chapter. It is dying with Christ like he died for us and then rising with Christ like he rose again on the third day. So when you're being baptized, you are being laid in the grave. And when you come up, you start your new life. We always say, the old demon house goes down and the new temple of the Holy Spirit comes up. We like it radical in SOS. I think radical simplifies things. You need to be baptized. So that the demons are standing there perplexed, wondering, where did my house go? Where is my home? I, didn't, I, I can't find it. And they can't find it because it's buried in baptism. You see, when the people of Israel went out of Egypt, they came to the Red Sea. And God opened up the Red Sea th uh, to them and they walked right through. But the, but, the, but the Egyptian army came after them. And when they walked down into the Red Sea with the water standing as walls on both sides, when the people of Israel came up on the other side, the water closed again and the enemy died in the water. And I'd like to say that your demons will die in the water. The things that, the habits that you are fighting, the things that you can't uh, beat, uh, salvation can beat. Baptism can beat. We've seen so many miracles when we baptize people. In our SOS festivals and in our churches, we baptize right away. And people are set free from so many addictions and from so many horrible things that have kept them bound for years. Chains are going down. Addictions are going down. And people are coming out healed and free. Hallelujah. I'm getting myself so excited here. I'm preaching myself so excited. Hope. That you will be a baptizer. You know we need a lot of baptizers. When I came back to Austria not so long ago. <laughs> they say in German. They say. Ah Johannes der Säufer. And that means Johannes the one that drinks so much. This was in a pub. And that rhymes in German. I said no. Uh, now it's Johannes der Teufer. Not der Säufer. Der Teufer. The baptizer. And they all gathered around. What do you mean by that? And I told them I'm a preacher of the gospel now. And uh, I love to baptize people. Okay, guys, listen. Uh, there are a lot of meanings to baptism. The meaning of baptism in water is, is explained to us best by two of the central characters or the main characters of the book of Acts. Peter and Apostle Paul. Uh, P Peter, who was, should we say, the lead pastor of the first church ever that we have in Jerusalem. And then Paul, who traveled to the Gentiles all around the Mediterranean Sea. And, um, and they explained it to us. Peter says in 1 Peter 3 and 18 to 21 that just like in the days of Noah, the people were saved through the water. Think about that. Uh, the ark was on the top of the water and the sinful world was underneath the water. So the water separated the people that believed in God and ran to the ark and was saved in the ark. Uh, the, the water separated the people that believed from sin. So sin died in the water masses and them in the ark were saved. So Peter says we are saved in the water just like Noah and his family were saved. Paul speaks about it like the foundations. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 5 he says that there is one Lord, one faith and one baptism. You see, he, 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 he says there's one Lord Jesus, there's one faith in him, and there's baptism. You can't be baptized if you don't have faith. It's part of the foundation. The author of the Hebrew, uh, of, um, of, um, of the Hebrews tells us in chapter 6 in verse 1 and 2 there that this is the beginning. This is the early steps. Uh, what? Well, repentance, uh, cleansing rites, laying on of hands, and so on. So uh, we... We repent, 
we are being baptized. That means the cleansing rites, baptized in water. And then we receive the laying on of hands and we receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So it's part of the foundation. It is a funeral. Romans chapter 6, uh, Paul speaks about this in verse 3 throughout 8. He says that, that we are being united with Christ. We die with him, we rise with him. In Colossians chapter 2 and 12, it actually talks about this being a circumcision. Just like the people of Israel were circumcised, uh, or the boys on the eighth day, you know, they cut away their foreskin as a sign of them belonging to the Jewish people. So just like that, in baptism, you also receive a sign belonging to the new covenant people. Uh, you can't see it, uh, but the devil for sure can. And the demons can. So in the, in the unseen world, in the spiritual world, you now have a, a covenant sign through baptism. Uh, you belong to Christ. You belong to the people of God. You belong to the new covenant. Ah, oh, I'm so full of this here. It is the start of our life with Christ. Colossians 3, chapter 26, 20, uh, chapter 3 and verse 26, 27 tells us that we are being clothed with Christ. It is like a one piece that you step into. Jesus is the one piece in baptism that you step into. And when you come out of the water, the devil can't see you anymore. He sees Jesus. You are now clothed with Christ. You are in Christ. And Paul speaks about this all the time. That when we are in Christ, there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ. Hallelujah. So we become one with Christ through baptism. We are born through the water. Ephesians 5 and, and, and verse 26 tells us. And Titus 3 and verse 4 to 6 speaks about the same. It is like a new birth through water. Just like there is water when a child is coming into this, to this world. There is also water when we are being birthed into the kingdom of God. All right. Baptism in the book of Acts. Let's just speak a little bit about that. And, and, and read a portion of scripture from the book of Acts chapter 8. And there are so many baptisms in the book of Acts. If I would go through them with you, in Jerusalem, uh, in chapter 2, after Peter has preached, they baptized 3,000 people right after his sermon that wants to believe in Jesus. They didn't go through a long baptism school. They were baptized right there uh, uh, after they had repented. And, and they were baptized and they received the Holy Spirit. In Samaria, when Philip, um, who who was a deacon in Jerusalem, chapter 6, then now had become the evangelist in chapter 8, when he preaches to Samaria, men and women are being baptized. Even the sorcerer Simon comes to be baptized. And um, yeah, I could continue. In chapter 9, we read about Paul and his conversion when he met with Jesus, was knocked off the horse and, and was blinded by the glory of Jesus. And after three days, he meets with Ananias who lays his hands upon him and gives him his sight back and preaches the gospel to him and he's being baptized. We can read about this in chapter 10. In the house of Cornelius, where Peter preaches to the Gentiles and to the Italians and to the people who are gathered there. And they are being baptized in the Holy Spirit by listening to Peter. And then they are baptized in water. Sometimes it, it, it goes that way too. You can't really make a, a, a too uh, sacred uh, theology around this. Sometimes you baptize in the Holy Spirit before you're baptized in water. And sometimes you baptize in water and then in Holy Spirit. Well, chapter 16 in Philippi. They baptized Lydia and her household, the businesswoman. Uh, they baptized the jailer. Paul and Silas are being delivered from jail. The, the foundations of the jail are shaking and the jailer comes to believe. And they baptize him and his entire family in the middle of the night. Mark that because the jailer couldn't wait until the morning. He wanted to be baptized right away. And uh, you read about it in Corinth, the 18th chapter. And you read it in, 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 in chapter 19 about the 12 men that Paul met that had been baptized with the wrong baptism. Or had, they had focused on John the Baptist and he had to preach the gospel about Jesus to them. And now they were united with Christ in his death and his resurrection through baptism. Oh my goodness. Let us read now. Let us get into the word of God here. And I'm going to read from the book of Acts chapter 8. And uh, from verse 26 about uh, the Ethiopian Enoch and his conversion. And we read here. 
Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip. I'm reading from the book of Acts chapter 8 and verse 26. About the evangelist Philip. The deacon that has become an evangelist. The angel said, go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and on his way he met an Ethiopian Enoch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Kandak, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. Hey, to all of you Africans that are listening to this. This was the first African that came into the kingdom of God. Well, there might have been some on the day of Pentecost. But this is really a story about an Ethiopian that comes to the Lord. And look at this. Yeah, this was the old Nubia. So he could be a Sudanese. So he could be an Ethiopian. But follow me here. He was sitting in his chariot and he was reading the prophet of Isaiah. Verse 29. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. And he asked him, do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. Uh, well, how can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip, who was a Jew, to come up and sit with him. You see, he sits, the born again Jew, and explains to the Gentile Ethiopian about prophet Isaiah and who he is prophesying about. And this is the passage that the Enoch was reading. He was like a sheep to be slaughtered, as a lamb before his shearer is silent. So he did not open his mouth. And in his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The Enoch asked Philip, tell me please, who is the prophet talking about himself or someone else? And here you can see how the early Christians were preaching again. Philip started preaching about Jesus, basing it upon this messianic prophecy. And we can see here, Philip began with that very passage of scripture, verse 35. And told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water. And the Enoch said, look, here is water. What can stand in the way of me being baptized? Let me stop right there. We understand here that as Philip was preaching the gospel of salvation to the Ethiopian. He must have included baptism. Because otherwise the Ethiopian would have not have asked him, Hey, there's water here. Let me be baptized. So when the early Christians preached salvation, they included baptism. Can you see that? Then we read here that, um, that Philip said, If you believe with all of your heart, you may be baptized. And the Enoch answered, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then it says, and he gave orders to chop the chariot and then both Philip and the Enoch went down into the water because they were not just sprinkling upon his head and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away and the Enoch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Hallelujah. Can you see this? This is one of those early Christian baptisms just next to a road. Hey, by the way, you don't need a church to be baptized. You can be baptized in a pond or a river or an ocean. You can be baptized in a bathtub. Where there is water, you can be baptized. Make disciples by baptizing them. Well, let us study this case here, this repentance and baptism of the Ethiopian and ask ourselves some questions. When does baptism take place in the first church? Well, I've already said it. Directly after repentance. It's part of salvation. Paul is the exception. But he was blind and did, and did have no one that could teach him. B. Where there is faith. Only where there is faith. Baptism can take place. The Bible is very clear about this again and again. That's why we don't baptize little children. That's why we actually in SOS, we don't baptize uh, uh, children under the age of 12. We like people to make a very clear, distinct, personal decision about this. So how is the baptism performed? Are you hearing me? Through immersion. They, they were taken down into the water. Uh, you know, Philip and the Ethiopian went down into the water and he baptizes him. 
We also read that they baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the Trinity. We also read in, uh, that in Ephesus, chapter 19, they only baptized in the name of Jesus. And there's been uh, debates about this, what is right. I say, well, take what is safe then, huh? Always baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Don't make it complicated. We bring people to our Trinity God, right? And uh, who performed the baptism? Well, all disciples. In, in Acts chapter 8, it is Philip who was a deacon from Jerusalem baptizing. And I think that it's not just preachers or, 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 or should we say uh, priests or bishops that can baptize. No, uh, it can be laymen of all kinds. I think nurses should baptize, carpenters should baptize, taxi drivers should baptize, soldiers should baptize. Go ahead and baptize. Everyone can baptize according to the New Testament and the early church. Yeah, all right. Where does the baptism take place? Well, I've always said where there is water deep enough to allow immersion. So find a lake, find a bathtub, find something that you can baptize in. Hey, friends, I got so many stories I could tell you. Sometimes I've baptized until my arms ache. I've been standing in a little river somewhere in Africa baptizing 150 people. I, I, I once was part of a baptism where we baptized 276 people on one day. My arms were aching, but they were going down, you know in the water and coming out of the water speaking in tongues some of them were so drunk we had to drag them to the beach and, 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 and put them right there in the sand or in the grass where they were speaking in new tongues I once baptized a woman that was that that came out into the water and when she came out into the water she had, she had prayed salvation prayer but when she came out into the water she started manifesting demons and I casted out the demon of her in the water and prayed a salvation prayer with her right there in the water I baptized her in the water and when she came out of the water she was already baptized in the Holy Spirit and spoke in new tongues I believe in the power of baptism I've seen that when we baptize people people come out healed there was one woman once with a uh, with one of those brain hemorrhage you know she she had blood pressing on her on 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 her, on her brain she was going to go through an operation she's had a stroke and that and she she was half paralyzed but in baptism hallelujah she was healed and came out of that baptism baptism healed and didn't need the operation anymore and got her her, her, her her full movement back in her body are you hearing me when you baptize miracles are going to happen okay I would like to challenge all of my Bible readers be like uh, Philip the evangelist, Philip the deacon, wherever you are next to the road, just baptize people. God bless you.